The overnight success, success that you had took many, many years. I mean, you had how many books out before Wool actually took off? Uh, Wool was the seventh or eighth release. And it's, it's interesting how, it's, it's neat to see how history rewrites itself um, to, to fit our, our model or, or what we think happened. But my first book was with a small press. And so I started with a, with a traditional contract and I was concentrating only on print books. I eat books, this is 2009. And, Ebooks were something I'd heard about, but they weren't my focus. So it's interesting that I, I went from that to um, self-publishing um, when I got the second contract and decided I'm, I'm just going to try this on my own. And it wasn't until I uh, saw my ebook sales were becoming or were overtaking my print sales that I began to focus my energy on that. So uh, the history is a little more convoluted than it sounds. It's kind of like how we. Fifty Shades of Grey, we just say it was a self-published book. It has a much more interesting history than that, I think. Right. And uh, right. the same with, with my writing history. I, I was really pressured by friends and family into submitting a manuscript and trying to get it uh, with a big publisher because they wanted to see it in bookstores. They wanted to see it do well. And uh, I, my, my um, pessimism has guided me in all things. You know, I, <laughs> I, I just wanted to... Um, uh, have written a book in my life. That was my, my goal starting off. And then after that, I just want to write a book that my mom would finish. And Has your mom finished your books? Yep, she actually became my uh, editor, and she still is to this day. She, um, I guess she does what an editor does. She calls me all the time and says, how come I don't have anything new to read? Which is what your editor's supposed to do. It took a long time. You, you had uh, vision, you had ideas for, for your first book. How long did it take before you actually finished that first manuscript? It took 20 years, but it wasn't the same book. Um, okay. <clears throat> I started my first novel when I was 12, and it was a complete ripoff of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, uh, Earth as Spaceship, and the same fumbling um, protagonist and same sense of humor. Uh, and I got three chapters in and got distracted by, you know, I, who knows what came up at the time. But uh, for the next 20 years, I would start books and I would abandon them. And I, Maybe that's a pattern that, I mean, this is all writers, like, can we all raise our hand that the first book we finished was not the first book we started? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a common um, affliction. And I, as such an avid reader, something I always wanted to have accomplished, I gave up and said I'll never, this is not something I'll ever do. Between my boating adventures and working as a roofer and as an audio video installer and all these other things I did, I was constantly daydreaming. And uh, I had all these stories written in my head before I sat down to write them. So when it finally came time to write them, you were digging back to the, the, yeah. the, the well that you had already uh, acquired? Yeah, and it's been my, um, uh, I guess my method with my writing since then is not to, to, not to wait and do the writing when I sit in front of the screen because that paralyzes you. I do my writing, I'm doing my writing right now. You know, I'm, I'm working, I'll have an idea for a scene so that when I do sit down tomorrow morning or when I wake up, I'll know what I want to write, and, it, and I can power through it. Anyone who, who meets you, I mean, you're, you're a charming guy. Uh, you, you're down to earth. You're, you're friendly. You're humble. You're a very generous person. Uh, and then we look at Wool, and we, particularly the first book. I mean, it is dark, dystopian. Where, where did that come from? N nobody likes a nice guy. Um, <laughs> we, uh, you know, the, the bad news is um, more captivating. I think tension is what drives stories. So... If you had a romance story where everyone just got along the whole time, and it was a, it was, you know, when we daydream at night, well, when I daydream at night, it's always like wish fulfillment. Like I just imagine winning uh, a sporting event, you know, playing um, American football, uh, soccer, uh, in my head, and um, there's no tension. I'm going to score the game-winning goal every night right before I fall asleep. Uh, if you translate that into a story, no one wants that. It's not what makes you want to turn the page. It's too satisfying. And so when I write, I want to write um, something that keeps you up at night and makes you want to read the next chapter. And looking back, everyone thinks like, oh, he, he like knew what he was doing. That's not the way it happened at all. I was terrified. 
I was clueless. I was making it up as I went along, you know, and that's, um, I had a lot of good advice from other people and bad advice from people too while I was doing this. So a big passion of mine now is just telling people where I messed up, where I would have done things differently, where I got lucky, um, and that it's all anecdote. This is one person's experiences. Go get as many other opinions as possible. But if I can reduce someone's suffering with those decisions that I suffered through, then I know they'll pass it along to the next person. Well, you said in a recent Facebook post, uh, and I have to quote, you said, I can speak up because I don't care about the fallout to myself. I care about two parties that I know deserve better, readers and writers. Um, as both reader and writer, thank you, Hugh, for standing up for us and, and for doing that. You've um, used your powers for good, not evil. Um, <laughs> you've, uh, I mean, author... So far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> AuthorEarnings.com, uh, you've opened the curtains and you've revealed a whole universe uh, to the publishing industry and to authors to just try and share information. I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Um, yeah, so, I mean, uh, talking about readers and writers, I think those are the two groups that we need to focus on, and we haven't focused on those groups. We focused on what are the needs of bookstores, which you're talking to someone who not only put himself through college working at Barnes & Noble, but supported his writing by working at an independent bookstore and is now has a real estate agent helping me look for a location to open my own store. I grew up in bookstores and I love them. Um, and I want them to do well, but I want them, to, they're at least third on my list. You know, like uh, the writers are first because you can have writers without um, readers. You can't have readers without writers. So it's more like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, you have to have writers. They're my top priority. Readers are not much below them. If anything, you know, the only, only reason they're below them is a chicken and egg thing. But th these are the people that we should concentrate on and what's good for them. I think I didn't answer your question, but that was fun to talk about. But it, was a good, it was a good answer anyway. So That's the political thing. Like, I know what I want to talk about, and so ask me your next question. I was going to talk just about go, go. <laughs> <laughs> You are touring a lot. Uh, you're on the road a lot. Uh, you're visiting a lot of places. How do you make the time to write? Uh, you, you should be able to write around anything going on in your life. You know, I, I've been through some really traumatic stuff while I'm writing. My last full novel, Sand, was written while I was on book tour in Europe. And that's a good excuse not to write. We're always looking for excuses not to write. I can't write because I have this going on in my life. I can't write because I need to be doing that. Um, when you're on book tour, well, you're doing something book-related, so don't write while you're doing that. My goal was, when I get back from book tour, I'm going to have a manuscript for my next book. And the terror, it's not because I'm a workaholic. It's because I'm terrified if I stop pedaling, I'll never learn how to do this again. I think one thing that helped is I kind of took the opposite tack on anything that seems logical. Like, I did not tell people that I was a writer or that I had a book available. I think this is a way for people to never want to check out what you do for the rest of your life, you know? It's to say, I wrote a book. I think that's, can, you know, as a bookseller, I saw what sold books and authors doing signings and saying, I wrote a great book was not the way to go about it. So I wouldn't tell people that I wrote a book. And when they found out that I wrote a book, they thought I was holding something back on them. They're like, why wouldn't you tell me that? It must be great, the fact that you're <laughs> keeping it to yourself. And so, yeah, there was 100 people that I wasn't annoying, but the one person who found out that I was a writer was intensely curious. Why would, why would you not tell me that you're writing novels? Tell me about them. And that person is so much more, um, not only more fun to talk to, but easier to talk to. And, more, it's a more honest transaction to have that conversation. Thank you guys. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it.